Hi, I'm Whitney Allison. Welcome to Bike Sports TV Garage. Today, we're talking about truck stuff. So Zach and I, for the most part, if we need to drive around town, we're driving a little old EV that we picked up a while back. But for all of our eventing needs and travel, we drive a F-250 that's been modified to run on waste vegetable oil. We picked it up uh, probably about five years ago when we couldn't rent a truck for a Fogo Fondo, and we picked it up for 3,500 bucks off of Craigslist. So today we have special guest Zach Allison who's going to walk you through how Big Red works on waste vegetable oil. Here go. What's up crew? Zach here with Bike Sports. Today we're going to run you through how everything works on the waste vegetable oil truck from oil collection to filtration to putting it in the truck and the truck mods. What waste vegetable oil actually is, is exactly what you have in your cabinet at home where you're gonna fry potatoes or whatever. Um, I get it from restaurants because the average person probably doesn't make that much waste vegetable oil. Um, ours is mostly peanut or vegetable oil. Um, it has a similar energy property to diesel. It's a little bit more viscous. Um, so diesel vehicles, you can't run vegetable oil on a gas vehicle. It has to be a diesel vehicle. Diesel vehicles operate in where the fuel combusts with compression. So you don't have a spark plug. The motor compresses the fuel and then it explodes. So the truck runs on diesel and I can still put diesel in the truck. Diesel gets directly injected into the cylinder, gets compressed, explodes. Vegetable oil works the same way. It has the same somewhat similar energy properties to diesel where it compresses, it compresses and explodes. So as long as the vegetable oil is viscous enough to run through the fuel system of the truck, then it can get directly injected into the cylinders, explode just like diesel would. So when we got the truck, Zach had no idea what waste vegetable oil was, but back when I was in college, I worked for Cliff Bar on the field marketing team and their entire fleet ran on waste vegetable oil. So we would bop around the country, going to different events, and having to get oil from these special places that go through there. This truck runs on waste vegetable oil. Mostly all we need to do for this vehicle is just heat it up as much as possible. So this is the radiator. Once the truck hits temp, thermostat turns on, the water pump pumps hot water through the system to cool down the motor. So your radiator is just full of water. Uh, with antifreeze so it doesn't freeze and break the radiator. So I've teed into the radiator here coming out. So as the water comes out, it goes out of the motor bay, along the aluminum fuel lines, under the waste vegetable tank that's full of filtered vegetable oil. And then the slightly cooled water along with the cooled water come back in under the radiator to go back through the radiator and back to cool the motor as well. So this truck, F-250, 7.3 liters run a little bit hot as it is. We haven't had any major overheating issues unless we're pulling something really big over a summer pot pass. Um, but we generally can get by by just turning the heat on and praying a little bit. Our truck is a 1997 Ford F-250 diesel, 7.3 liter. Um, and then this year is a uh, turbo diesel direct injection. You'll see as we move along in the video of how everything works, but uh, it's definitely an analog setup. I find it hard to like, I could spend a couple thousand bucks on a filtration system that's motorized and pressurized, but it's kind of ironic like dumping money into that while saving money on waste vegetable oil for a truck that's like, we've already surpassed its like financial value of like money saved on vegetable oil anyway. Um, with how my setup is, there is a lot of room for human error. So there have been some uh, miniature Exxon Valdez situations uh, in the garage um, and in our old house one time in the basement where either a valve will get left open or something will just get kicked and overflow. Usually it's less than 10 gallons of vegetable oil, but uh, there have been some, some spillages. So this is waste vegetable oil. It is just 
canola, veggie, olive oil. Those are all just different kinds of waste vegetable oil. Um, the waste part obviously is that it has been used. Um, so this is coming out of the five micron filter. So this is what it looks like after being filtered to five microns. And then this is what it looks like right before it goes into the truck at one micron. So it's just a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, you can't see a mic one micron with the naked eye. So it's really just the filter bags doing their job and trust that it's at one micron um, before it goes into the truck. And then the truck filters, car filters are usually five microns. So the one micron should flow freely through and just save that fuel filter for as long as possible. This is a um, five micron polypropylene bag filter. So this droops all the way down and then gets filled with vegetable oil. Um, and then these two are five micron. These two are one micron. And then it's just gravity. So in winter, I've got a little strap on this one. Generally, it flows pretty good through the bucket filter at like one to 200 micron. This gets hot, so it filters a little bit more quickly when it's hot. Um, and then if I have a long trip and I'm processing as much oil as possible, it's hot, warmer to go through there. And then it goes pretty easily into the truck, whether it's hot or cold, and then gets heated up in the truck while we're driving and then explodes in the motor, propelling us to wherever we are going. So when I get the vegetable oil from the commissary kitchen or from the <clears throat> food trucks, it comes in these cubes. So these are 35 pounds. I'm not sure like the US, you know, anything but the metric system. So this is 35 pounds of vegetable oil, um, which I've measured out to 4.5, it's like 4.8 gallons. Um, so each one of these cubes, I kind of equate to like just under five gallons. Um, it doesn't matter how much it actually is in here. I'm kind of just filling each one of these up and processing it as I go. And then when I'm putting it in the truck, I'm kind of measuring out the mileage of like, if we're going to Salt Lake City, then that's 800 miles um, round trip. So then I'm looking at, you know, something around 50 to 70 gallons uh, of fuel, which is pretty easy for us to carry between the 50 gallon slip tank and these 4.8 gallon jugs. Um, so this, you know, waste vegetable oil, this is how it comes when it's not waste vegetable oil and it's just vegetable oil. Um, here's the chemical properties. Um, not chemical properties, but like nutritional facts. Uh, I wouldn't recommend drinking it, but um, energy density wise, similar to diesel, way more viscous, mostly because of the glycerols. Some people actually process their own uh, biodiesel, which is super cool. I haven't gotten that into it yet. Um, it requires like methanol washes and a lot of chemistry. I'm terrible at chemistry. So for now, 100% waste vegetable oil straight into the truck. So the uh, coolant lines from the radiator come along the frame, along the fuel lines, heating the fuel lines, and then into this, what looks like a trash can that's cut in half. It actually is a trash can cut in half that is strapped to the tank and insulated. So once it gets hot, if I am running errands or something, I can turn it off and the tank won't get really cold really quickly. It kind of maintains heat, heats up the vegetable oil so that it's running through the system as viscous as diesel is, or at least close to as viscous as diesel is. So this is the switch, the ever important switch. Um, so you'll see here, this says diesel fuel only. We're gonna disregard that. So the back switch is for the back tank. We purge the system on diesel. So everything right now with the truck not running has diesel in it. It's pretty chilly out. So I wouldn't wanna try and start it on vegetable oil being viscous. Um, and it just wouldn't really, it would take forever to start. Um, so when the truck hits temp, we can see the temp gauge here. When it gets sort of to the O of normal, I don't have an actual temp gauge um, for water temp. When it gets like towards the N or the O of normal, I know that the thermostat's on. I can feel under the truck if I want to that the coolant lines are hot and it's heating the fuel lines in the front tank. And then I'll switch to the front tank knowing that the warm-ish or hot vegetable oil will flow through the system and not cause any issues. Slip tank was like a huge uh, luxury purchase for me. So like before I had this um, on this electric pump, 
we would just have the those cubes in the bed and we'd hop in the bed, pull out the cubes, they're 35 pounds each arbitrarily. And then with a funnel, I'd pour it in. So you're like driving through Wyoming, it's crazy windy. You're like just pouring from a jug into a funnel and a gust of wind just like covers you and you feel like a chicken nugget and smell like a chicken nugget. But so this, I just turn on the pump, fill up the tank and we're going and I don't feel like a chicken nugget anymore. So we haven't had any big trips for a while. So this guy looks like, I don't know, 45 gallons, 40 gallons. Um, so a solid amount. This is probably at 35 or so gallons. And then I just filled a slip tank to go on a trip last week to an airport run. So this guy's probably at 20, 25 gallons. So uh, definitely over a hundred <clears throat> when we're getting ready for the next drive. Um, I'll go by all the commissary kitchen, the restaurant, the food truck friends, and kind of grab all the oil and then just filter down the line into the slip tank and then carry however much extra I need if it's over a thousand miles. So the only like kind of issue that we have, which is ongoing and happens with any vehicle, or especially like a truck this size, is the fuel pressure can get low. Um, so it gets low if I switch it to vegetable oil too early and the vegetable oil is cold. Um, when the, it also happens when the fuel filter starts to get clogged. So every like, at this point, our fuel is probably cleaner than what you buy at the store. So um, it's like seven to 8,000 miles the fuel filter will start to go. So we've kind of been in like a parking lot or something and we've gone to replace the fuel filter, which is super easy just pop up this sick little lid that has no purpose and here's the fuel filter so we kind of always have a couple fuel filters on hand where we can just pop the fuel filter out pop the new fuel filter in and then back on the road all right thanks for joining us on bike sports tv garage episode on truck stuff we'll see you out there truck stuff purse purse lightning 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 don't forget to like and subscribe.